Minister, on mental health and wellbeing, I conducted a survey on third level students' health and wellbeing, and I've sent the results to you and the policy recommendations uh, to your office. Four out of five of students say that their college experience has been negatively impacting uh, their mental health, and more than 90% can report struggling with loneliness, with stress, and feeling uh, disconnected. Uh, one in every four first-year students who are not aware of the mental health uh, support and counselling services available in their college, and that's really worrying as well. But sh students uh, shared stories of struggling to get an education while living and studying in completely inappropriate uh, environments. Many are in cramped flat shares with large numbers of other students who are living at home with families, also juggling working from home and homeschooling uh, siblings. Many are without the proper internet connection, laptops and our desks that they need. And you know, I've had instances even in my own constituency where the broadband has been down for three weeks flat and all of those students cannot access their online studies right throughout uh, from national school, secondary school and third level. Uh, but one student explained they're having to study while sitting on their bed uh, as their parents and siblings use the other desk space from homeschooling and from, from, abroad, from, uh, from home, uh, working from home. This meant that between studying and sleeping, students are in the same spot sometime for 20 hours a day. This has obvious implications for the students' mental and physical health. Another explained that due to sharing a cramped flat with other students, they were regulated to sitting on the floor in the corner of a room and they didn't have space for a desk. They spoke of struggling mentally and physically after enduring three-hour lectures in one position. Other students spoke of the particular challenges of being uh, parents and trying to juggle childcare, homeschooling and looking after their own education in cramped houses. The results of this survey are alarming and should be a wake-up call about the level of stress and hardship faced by students. The situations where students shared with us are heartbreaking and are very, very concerning. The mental health implications are alarming, but sadly over a quarter indicated that they have no one with whom to share their thoughts and feelings. Yet so few, only 12% have accessed the mental health support and counselling service offered in their college, colleges. Waiting months for counselling appointment due to limited staffing and resources is a major barrier. Uh, we cannot allow this pandemic to inflict long-term damage on them. Mental health services need to be quick and easy to access. However, Minister, in your strategy document, housing global domination with human capital that powers Ireland's knowledge economy, the subject is barely addressed. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, human capital refers to, and, and this is the exact definition, employees and all of the knowledge, skills, experience, etc. that they have, which makes them valuable to a company or economy. But Minister, my question is, what about the intrinsic val value of students and young people as human beings? Minister, students are not commodities. They shouldn't be treated like hamsters on a wheel, and I'm afraid that they are. There's a looming mental health crisis among students, and I urge you to act urgently. I hope you'll review the information that I have sent and the policy recommendations that we have made. Thanks to Deputy Conway Walsh, um, and lots of uh, constructive uh, questions and points, but then, but then I, 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 let's just be very clear at the outset, nobody believes students are commodities or, or, or has a monopoly on concern for them indeed. Uh, I myself have virtually been meeting with students in Cavan, in Longford, in Donegal, six students' unions, um, and, uh, and indeed in your own constituency in Ballinrobe um, in, in the last two weeks. And you're right, it's an extremely tough and difficult time uh, for students and for everybody in the country. And I welcome the, the work that you've done and genuinely do on the mental health and wellbeing study. And thank you for sending it to me. Um, as you know, I've established uh, a group uh, chaired by the USI, um, a, mental, a mental wellbeing, sorry, it's a wellbeing and student engagement group. Um, and we're currently seeking submissions to look at what more can be done to support students now and we will feed your findings and submission into that process we've also it's trying to do two things really one is map out the services that are there because i share your views that not every student can easily find or access some of the existing services that are there but secondly to identify what more needs to be done we have provided five million euro of funding for student mental health services i am hearing from some students the significant benefit of that but i accept we have more that we need to do I take the point about broadband and some of those broader challenges in relation to remote working or remote studying, but I am concerned here that there'd be any student in higher education without access to a laptop, 
because we have purchased 17,000 of them. And if you want to give me examples uh, of that privately, I'd be very happy uh, to follow up uh, directly on that.